The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello, welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Katie, and in today's episode, I'm going to make a two minute toothbrushing timer. Amazing hacks, inspired designs, each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So when I first thought about making this timer, my first thought was just to grab something like this out of my box, uh, Circuit Playground, uh, and it would just be a fairly simple few lines of code, display on the near pixels, how long you spent brushing your teeth, turn it on and off with the on and off switch. It would be done very quickly. However, after thinking this, uh, I realized it's quite resource wasteful. For this problem, we don't need a microcontroller. We don't need all the sensors that are on the board. We don't even need the near pixels. We just want some basic LEDs to display how long we've spent or how much time we've got remaining. So it's, way overkill for what we need um, and quite a lot more costly than the solution could be. So then I started thinking about how to actually design the timer and come up with this. So if we use a 555 and we set it up so we've got a pulse and the time period is 10 seconds. We can then feed that in to a shift register, um, or they actually two, and then we can, for each of those 10 seconds, output to an LED. So we'll have 12 of those. So one LED every 10 seconds for 12 is 120 seconds, uh, which gives us our two minutes of time. So that's a much simpler, easier solution. We'll power it by some batteries and put it in a nice little box. And we are doing it all nice and easy with our good old friend, the 555. Although I'll probably use one slightly smaller than that in the actual project. So here's the schematic for our circuit. So I've got the power here. So instead of needing a on-off switch to turn on and off uh, or wasting battery when it's sitting idle, I've got the battery pack here. This is going to be three AA batteries, which will make 4.5 volts. I'm then going to use this relay. So when it's been switched off, which will be done automatically at the end of the cycle, the VCC will actually be here connected to eight, so there will be no power for the rest of the circuit, so no draw on the batteries. But when we press this button, it will energize this side, which will actually switch VCC to the battery voltage. So then VCC will be powered, which will power the rest of our components. And like I said, at the end, there's gonna be a off signal, which will come in here it will pull this down, that will make that circuit, and then this will reset. So that will go to eight and VCC will be disconnected again. So that signal is at the end of our shift registers, which we'll get to in a minute. So in here, we've got this 555. So when the circuit's powered, this will switch on. We've got the standard capacitors and resistors that are needed. But these ones here are calculated to work out what we want for this. So we are using it as an A stable. We want one LED to come on every 10 seconds. So I want the period to be as close to 10 seconds as possible. So we figured out if we go for 4.7 microfarad for the capacitor, resistor one to be three meg, and resistor two to be 3K. That will get us a period of 9.791 seconds. So 
if we stick with the 24 series, the next resistor for resistor one would be 3.3. Now that would take us further above 10 seconds than we were below. If we went to E48, we could get down to 3.16, but we're still more higher, above, more above 10 than we are lower with the 3 meg. Could use multiple resistors there to get the right value, but actually 9.0. 791 is as close as we need for this purpose. We've got 99.9% um, .9 duty cycle, that's fine. Uh, we need rising edge and that's all. So that's our 555. So then we can go back to schematic. So that's going to output here. I've then got that signal inverted. So on the shift registers that we're using, we've got this. So it's a serial in 8-bit parallel out. So we need the shift register and storage register clocks, and they are both positive edge triggered. But if they're both connected together, the storage register, which is our, what we're looking at for our output, will be one pulse behind the shift register coming in. Now ideally I want it to clock and that to be the 10 seconds. So by putting it through the inverter first we will have something like this. So we'll be going along here and then we'll come down and then across again and down. Our inverted signal will be along here. This is rather rough but it gives the gist of what we're doing. So if I feed the inverted one into let's see now okay and that one into our clock when this goes high here because they're both rising edge triggered that will shift it into there and then this rising edge will shift it so we will have that one going into the shift register and that one clocking it into the storage register and at that point we will get our LED illuminating. So in one cycle we're doing both. So that's what we're doing with there and that's the same one going to both because we need more than 8 bits. We want 12 LEDs. So this first one is up here. Our data in is just VCC so it's always going to be shifting one in for every pulse. So we've got the first LED, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. And then when it gets full this one will then come along here and then we will be putting that into the second shift register and it will start off with ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth. Then I'm leaving a extra 10 second pause just in case you don't notice it so it will be fully on for that 10 seconds and that 10 seconds so it'll be 20 seconds at the end and then the next one will be this off signal which comes back here and turns our power off do you like free stuff? You can join the Road Test program. You can get free dev kits, test equipment, and even online training courses. In exchange for a detailed review, join our Road Test program. Learn more at the link below. Ah, free stuff? So now we've built our circuit on breadboard. I can use the scope to have a look at the timing on our 555. So we've got channel one, which is the pulse from the 555 and channel two, which is the inverted for the shift register. So we can clock in both on the same. So we can use the cursors and see we've got 10 seconds time between the pulses, which is exactly what we wanted. So that timing is all fine. We'll have one LED every 10 seconds. So now we can put it on some strip board and solder it ready to go in our case. So 
So now we've got our electronics sorted, it's time to look at the case. So in Libre CAD, I've drawn the outside of the Hammond box. Then I've put a circle as a template in the middle of that box and evenly spaced 12 eight mil holes. Uh, this is because we're using five mil LEDs, but the clips we're using to hold them in is eight mil. Uh, and then I've added a little crosshair to the center of each of those holes so we can center the drill on it. So the next thing I've done is print out this onto a piece of paper and then we've used some masking tape to put it on the top of the Hammond box. Now I can take this and use the drill to drill a hole in each of those positions. And here it is. So we've got our electronics with all our LEDs in. So I can now take the first one. And what we need to do for these LED clips is we push it all the way through the hole. And then we take the clip and you push the LED into the clip and it will make a little light clicking. And now it's held softly. And then you push it back through the hole and now it's a really secure, firm grip on that. So I'm gonna put the rest of the LEDs in. And the last one, through the whole clip on and push back. So now we've got our LEDs. I've also got the button to go in the middle. So these buttons, I've pre-soldered some wires onto there. We put the rubber, gasket on the button before we put it through the hole and then once it's through the hole we put the ring on it first and then the nut. I also quite like these Wago 221 connectors and you put the two wires you want to connect together so that one and one half of the switch and then be really easy to take it back apart if we want to change buttons or change anything or just open up the case again. Also saves using the soldering iron in tight place. So we've got that. And then for our power, we've got these and this battery box. And just for now, I'm gonna do the same with these connectors. Makes a really quick and secure connection. So anything in one connector is then connected together. And it's all insulated by the connector itself. So there, we've got a really good connection. So this is gonna go in like this. The battery box just fits a slid in there. I'm gonna get some tape and stick that in. And here it is assembled. Our little black box, we've got the 12 LEDs and the button. And then when we press the button, Let's have a go at using it. So we've got our working timer. It works great. If I was doing it again, I think I would put the start button as a illuminated LED button or put another LED somewhere on the case. When you press the button to start it, you don't get any feedback for the first 10 and a bit seconds. Um, so it might just be a bit more reassuring to have some indication that it is doing something. The only other thing with it is that you have to remember that 
slight quirk with the timing because it's all off until you press the button. The 555 has to get to the point where it can start giving us the 10 second output. So it adds on about four seconds extra to the first LED segment. It's not a terrible thing by the time you've picked up your toothbrush and got started. That's used most of that four seconds. Even if you start immediately, four seconds extra isn't much in the grand scheme of things. So that's fine. So that's all we've got time for today. Have you ever come up with a project that you could have solved in a few lines of code on a microcontroller, but actually designed it as a circuit instead? Let us know on the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents and we'll see you next time.